Welcome back. This time we're going to be opening the desktop Mac base cabinet. Uh, you saw how we did the uh, tool pass for a full sheet of plywood. But let's say you wanted to uh, cut this uh, cabinet, uh, cabinet parts out using a, a desktop Max. Now, normally you would want a full size machine to do this, but if let's say you have only a desktop Max and you're training your students, uh, that would be fine. So I've got this up here and I've already done some of the tool pass and I've left some things incomplete so I can show you a few techniques here. First of all, you notice right here, I've always mentioned that the desktop base cabinet, the cutout, the cutout should always be your last uh, cut. All these are using the same bit, so we'd group all those together. So I'm gonna move this, click in this arrow, and I watch how the desktop base cabinet cutout moves to the bottom. So now that's in the correct location. And so I've already done the tool pass on, on these. And I'm going to open the, the uh, desktop, uh, the cutout, and notice where I placed the tabs for this one. Now, this one, we're going to be putting screws into our spoil board to hold this in place. Now, if you had uh, some, uh, uh, some nylon nails, that would probably be a great, this would probably be a great place to use one, even if possibly putting it right into the, uh, right into the, through the cabinet and put, uh, putting setting that and putting some putty over that later But we're going to use screws for this demonstration right here. So I've calculated that I've uh, got again the outside uh, We're going to do a ramps the smooth ramps three inches tabs. We've already got those placed So we're in good shape right now same bit that we've been using we're going to calculate that Yes, we want to cut through the material and, and I did a preview and I'll right here you can see that there's a little bit more waste material on this side than this side. Well, we definitely need to have this in the center to make use of every space that we can have. So I'm gonna go from my 3D view to 2D view. I'm gonna select everything right here. That's how they change colors. I'm gonna to go to align objects and we're gonna move selection to center material. I'm gonna click that. And let's double check here because I don't see didn't see it move here. Look right here. We got about eight and a half inches. Go back over here. And six and a half. So uh something is not quite right here. So I'm gonna again select everything here. I'm gonna group those just to hold it. Oh, I know what the problem is. It's this right here. Okay, so that is keeping us from centering that. So we're just going to manually move this because that's sticking, that's where it is centering from. We're going to just manually move that few spaces there. That looks pretty good. Right there, I can zoom in a little bit. Finer movements, F to fit. Okay, and that explains why it did not automatically center. So I'm going to go back here. See if we have about three quarters of an inch on both sides. Okay, that's about three quarter there. And go on this side. And a little bit a little bit more now on that side than this side. I think we can probably uh, live with that. Let's see. Okay. Now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some some uh, screw spots, and if we go back to uh, the training where I did the practice exercise 4.2 screw hold down using screw spots. We're going to be using that routine. That's about a 0 0.05 set. It's going to set where the screw spots are and it's going to make sure that they are not in the place where we're going to be cutting. Now we're going to be using the same thing with uh, the wall cabinets, but you have a lot, a lot more space to put the screws in. This is the one that's very tight. So the first thing we're going to do when we make the screw spots, we're going to create a circle and we're going to place that circle along the outside border in areas that will not uh, have any danger of it hitting the screw. Well, we definitely don't have a danger on these sides. So we have to be very careful. Here, it's going to be easy to place one right in there. So we're going to create a circle, draw a circle, 
and 0.26 and we can easily place it right here without a problem and there we've got one of our screw spots right there I'm going to close this because what I want to do is I want to show the tool path it's going to go around the outside now notice right here if we zoom in right here in this location that is showing where that tool path is F to fit that's also showing you the the direction and the bit is taking and it's showing you the size of that uh, that that bit so i'm going to zoom out right here we've got a problem and the problem is and i'm glad this came up because uh if if you're not uh if you're new to some of these tool pathing this is something you want to do anytime you make a movement and see right here, this is way out, this is right on the line. Well, we know that this is supposed to be outside the line. So what happens? I'm gonna close this. Anytime you move your objects and you've already got tool pathing in there, the tool pathing stays the same unless you recalculate. So there's this little handy calculator that says recalculate all tool paths. Okay, and so instead of having to go back into each one of these, select the objects and recalculate, I can do it all in one pass. Click OK. Yes, we want to cut through materials. All tool paths have been re recalculated successfully. So we'll click OK. OK, so now, OK, when I click on this, now it's outside the line. Perfect. And this is showing right there. There's your router bit right there. OK, so F to fit. F to fit. There we go. Now I'm going to create a screw spot. 0.26 because we want uh, it, uh, the router bit to be able to fit inside there. And I'm going to go close to where that is right here and place that. So I'm going to zoom in, okay, and I'm going to see how close I can come there. Okay, so that's pretty close if we hit the screw spot there. Now, that's fine, 0.26, if you have a screw that that's all the bigger the head is. But most, and I prefer a pocket screw for putting in, putting in uh, my material. It, it does less uh, damage to the MDF. Uh, pocket screw has a head of 0.36. Now, you can get a smaller headed pocket screw that only has about a 0.286 head. And whatever screw you use, you want to have a small enough head. So I'm going to see what it would look like with 0.36. Let's say 0.40. Uh, let's go 0.45. That's definitely bigger. Bigger. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'm going to go over here to Transform Objects, and I'm going to want this time I want them linked because I want it to be a perfect circle. I'm going to 0.45. Okay. So right there, if we group these two. That is that will that right there where that is at that will that will be just perfect. Okay. Okay. So I know if the if the the screw spot is at this location right here, we're going to be able to fit. So I'm going to go ahead and group these uh, together first, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to move to a new layer, and we're going to call that new layer screw spots. And I'll give it a color, and we'll right here, and we'll choose choose green there. Click OK, and then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to select my screw spot layer right there, and and I've selected that screw spot layer, so anything I'm doing on there will uh, stay on that layer, because later on we're going to want to separate a few things here. So I'm going to. Uh, as long as I know that's going to be right there, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Control C to copy, Control V to paste, and I'm just going to move that on down. I'm going to go ahead and stop right here, press F to fit, and then I can move that on down because I know that it's going to be okay. There we got 
two screws right there. That might be enough, but just in case, we'll put one down here. In case there's any bone that, uh, that would control C to copy, control V to paste, and then I'm gonna move that one up with the arrow key on my keyboard, knowing that it's not gonna hit. Put that in about the middle. And this one, we're gonna take that to the corner, control C to copy, and control V to paste. And we're going to move that up a little bit higher. Okay. Now I'm going to take what I've got right here. This one I'm going to go ahead and move across in the way so I can check to make sure that this is going to avoid any possibility of hitting those screws. Now, right there, you notice we already got have a screw there, so that's not going to be a problem. It's Fine, it's out of the way right here. Okay, that looks like it's going to be okay. Right there is going to be perfect. Okay, long as we put that screw right in there, we'll be good to go. So, F to fit, control C to copy, control V to paste, use my arrow key going down right here, and there's a corner. And I don't need that outside anymore. I can just move this on down right here to the middle. And this is only this is only used for making sure that, that nothing would hit that screw head. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that now. I'm through with that. So I'm going to go over here now. Take this off, and we're going to go over here, and we're only going to leave the screw spots visible right here. Close, and there is one screw spot that we forgot. We did. I'm going to say there it is. There we forgot that one. I'm going to click on it. Right click, move to layer screw spots. Okay. Now I'll take off the base cabinet right there. Now we're good to go. Now there's. I could go ahead and uh, draw a big box around all these or touch them individually holding the shift key or another shortcut key is control A, selects everything. And then I'm gonna go in here where it says pocket and we're gonna go 0 0.05, okay. Uh, we'll just use conventional offset, that's fine. We're not gonna ramp the plunge mood and we're gonna put the screw spots and we're going to calculate okay and now we're going to preview select the tool path okay and there are places where we're going to do that but notice right there you have to fit now why is it so close to the line there because we did not reset the preview after we recalculate all tool paths let's do that reset the preview preview all tool paths now Okay, good, good. Look around. Those no place where we're going to put those screws. Well, we have a, a problem with the the bit hitting them, so we're in good shape. But we want to do that. The screw spots, the very first thing we're going to do. What we're going to do is position this piece of plywood on the table without securing it, and then we're going to do the screw spots because all you do is you're going to lightly, lightly ta uh, touch that. You might, you might have to put a little pressure maybe uh, on this while it's doing it uh, so it doesn't slip, but usually the material itself will uh, hold in place while you're doing this. Uh, so now one last thing, we're gonna close this. One last thing that's very, very important. We're gonna go up to where it says material setup and click set. And this has happened to me before, and it's disastrous. Notice right here, you have uh, rapid Z gaps above material. Well, the problem with this is if there's any type of warp in that plywood and it's over the point two, and your blade is, is moving, uh, your bit's moving across there, it can catch that plywood and start uh, and start lifting it up and moving it around. So we're going to put that 
wrap the clearance gap now to one full inch. Make sure every time it moves between the screw spots, it is not going to uh, it's not going to touch the plywood. And I'm going to make this Z one, and we're going to click OK, OK, and we're click OK. Just hit OK. We're going to close here, and it says it suggests to recalculate over here. Everything back on. F to fit. We're going to go back here and recalculate all tool paths. And we're good and we're good to go. Everything was recalculated. So all of now is a matter of saving all those tool paths. But you're only going to you're going to save the screw spots in a separate file. So you do the screw spots and so you would save and here here you would do is you'd only save the screw spots first. That way you would save to save the tool path to file. The other ones, these three, you'll save to another file that you that you can recognize, and that we'll do after you've done the screw spots, screw spots, and you put the screws in to hold your material. The next one we'll be ta uh, taking it, it will be the wall cabinet, which will be much easier because you do not have to be as careful on your screw spots. There. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, this time we're going to be doing our screw spots on the desktop max, uh, and we're going to be cutting out the two sides for our wall cabinet. Now, again, you did the full sheet uh, wall cabinet sides with vacuum hold down, so screw spots was not an issue. But here we want to be able to hold this down. Of course, we want to make sure that we miss uh, the hitting the uh, the bit. Now, easily you can see that we could put some screws on both sides here, and that would be fine. But I want you to practice with the screw spots, just like we did in the base cabinet. The first thing we're going to do is we have plenty of room here. We're going to go ahead and uh, make the screw spots, and we can, I think, easily put them. Does, does not have to be exactly. The same amount from each side. We're, we're have plenty of room here. We're not going to be worrying about hitting these you know, screws that quickly. We'll go over to this side. Now, let me do one thing here. Go right over here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to preview this tool path right here. And notice that I've already put in the tabs. I've already put in all the cutting files here for you. So you don't have to repeat that. But when you're putting tabs and you have a small amount in between, it's good to put the tabs right across from each other because that will hold this in place. Uh, same thing, uh, we've got one in here in the middle. What happens if we do not put any tabbing here, even though we cannot put any screws here or here or here because it's too thin, this piece will start vibrating uh, as it's being hit with a bit. Sometimes it'll break off. That piece can come up and jam into the motor, and and you can lose your uh, position. So that's why we have it here. And if you if we notice right, if we click this, you click back over here, it shows it'll start with this green uh, boxes. It'll go right around here, and then it's going to end up on this side. So that's why we put two tabs on this side right here. So. That's good to go right there. Now we just have to do the tool pathing. But if you noticed, I made a slight mistake here. And, and uh, as I said, I'm not, I, I welcome sometimes mistakes because it's going to show you you're going to do the same thing yourself sometimes. So this is how you correct it. Okay, so I want to create, uh, I want to send those to a different tab. Don't want to have to maybe mess around. I guess I could, you know, Put the shift key down and hold those, uh, hold all those uh, at the same time, and then send them to a new uh, new layer, which would be shelf uh, the the uh, uh, hold down uh, screw spots. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just select all the cabinets 
Now you gotta be careful of this because you don't want to mess up if you do this. I'm gonna go control X. You can think of X like a scissors cutting something out. It's there. I just have to get back to it. Now I can quickly select all these, right click, move to layer, and we're going to put a new layer, and that's going to be screw spots. And we're going to give that a color right here. Click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and click any place in here. I'm going to control V to paste. Okay, control C to copy, control X is to cut out, and then V to paste either one of those back in. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new uh, tool path. This is going to be a pocketing tool path. 0 0.05 is the depth. I'm going to use the same bit that we've been using, conventional, no ramp. We're going to call this screw spots. And I want to go ahead and just select those screw spots. So I'm going to click on my layers tab. And I'm just going to head and turn everything off except our screw spots there at the bottom. There we go. Okay, so now it's just a matter of selecting all those, draw a box around those, calculate. And we're going to preview selected toolpath. Okay. And we'll go ahead and preview all toolpaths while we're at it. So you, as you can see, these are not nowhere close to where that bit's going to be moved. So those are, those are great. Those should be sufficient to hold your material in. Uh, and you're going to be using the pocket screws usually. I like those because they are self-tapping and they do not mess up your MDF uh, sacrificial piece very much. But we want to make sure those screw spots are right at the top because you're going to do those as a separate tool path. Remember that. Screw spots separate while your place, your, your, your material is placed at, at right here. The X, Y, and Z is right there in the corner. Make sure that's uh, tight against there when you're doing this. And just let it go and it'll quick. You should be able to, without moving that uh, plywood, it should be able to make those little spots there real quickly. Uh, you can always uh, hold down one side uh, manually if you, if you need to while it's doing it. Just make sure you are keeping your hands out of the way. So these other ones will all group as one. And remember, your cutout is the last one. Now, remember that one very important thing I mentioned. Okay, so if there's any bow, anything where that bit's coming over here and it's lifting up after cutting here, and there's a little warp on that, if it catches that plywood, could be disastrous. So we're going to click on our set here. We're going to make sure all the rapid area gaps, right, the clearance gaps are one inch. Everything is going to be one inch. Now, if you're doing a lot of cutting uh, on a piece that's been sufficiently held down, you definitely want to keep those at about 0.22. You barely want to uh, get above the surface because you don't want to waste a lot of time going up and down. But for this, we're only making three to six spots. We want to make sure that they clear, cleanly goes across without hitting. So this should work here. We'll click OK. Yes. OK. And we'll do the recalculate just because it says it should not be a problem. OK. So it's not saying, so it's saying that we could not do all our, we'll get all our layers back on here. Right here. And. F to fit, and click our recalculate again. Okay, please check the data for the following. So right here, let me go here, our shelf pins, double click here. And it's gonna say no vector selected. So we're gonna to have to go back and reselect. If, if, if something happens like this, then you're gonna to have to do what I'm doing right now. We're gonna go with the shelf pin right here first. That's why we have those layers. Select here again. And sometimes, if, again, if it doesn't recalculate and it gives you errors, then you have to manually go back and select them again. Okay. So that's done. Your screw spots are done. 
And now we want the screw spots. Okay, and now we want the back rabbet. So we're going to go ahead and just like that. Okay, so those vectors might must be selected again. We're going to go back, grab it right here. Look over here. Go back here. Select them. Select them right here. Draw a guideline down there. Calculate. Okay, that's okay. Shelf dados. Go back over layers. Okay. All cabinet shelves. That's our shelf dado. Go back over here to 2D view. And select those. Calculate. And then our cutout, the very last thing. Actually, we put everything back up here if we want because all we need to do for the cutout, click in the white space first, double click this, hold our shift key down right there. There's only two things you have to do. Hold there. Yes, we go. Close this. And let's see if I recalculate now. Everything's working fine now. So we're good to go. So now we just, again, again, you need to save all these uh, files together. And you save the screw spots separate. And that's a good way to be able to fasten down your materials on the ShopBot uh, desktop Max without... Uh, without the hitting the bit. And now it's just a matter of running these files. Thank you for your time.